Hi, welcome to Monroe Live. I'm Paul Turnbull. Uh, Monroe and Associates is an engineering consulting company. We help our clients save money, improve their products, and get things to market as fast as possible. We were tearing down this particular uh, drive unit from General Motors. This is a, from the Equinox EV. And I noticed an unusual feature on this drive unit that uh, they chose to use a mechanical oil pump to circulate the oil, cool the motor, and lubricate all the gears. Typically, and in the past, GM used an electric oil pump. And other companies like Tesla and Nissan also use electric oil pumps. So it's a kind of an unusual choice to go with a mechanical oil pump. And I was kind of considering why GM would make this choice. You need to circulate oil, you need to cool the motors. And so a pump is necessary. So let me just go and, and bring you up to speed on what a mechanical and electric oil pump is and what it does. So in order to lubricate the bearings and lubricate the gears, you need to flow a little bit of oil. In these kinds of motors as well, we're gonna spray oil on the windings of the motor and actually through the rotor to keep the magnets cool. So oil is fantastic for that because it doesn't conduct electricity, so you can spray it right on the windings. So we often use oil to cool electric motors and always use oil to lubricate bearings and gears. The only trouble is that at low temperatures, minus 40, oil has the consistency of jello. And so you need a pretty powerful pump to be able to circulate that oil. And so we use, uh, in some cases, an electric oil pump. So this is what it looks like on the outside. Inside, there's an electric motor so it has windings on the outside and it has a little rotor with uh, molded magnets. And this uh, um, pops in there and that motor drives a little uh, impeller to drive the oil. This motor requires some controls. So a little circuit board and then the way this goes together, you just push it on and these connectors cut right through the wire and, and through the insulation to make the electrical connection. So you, there's no soldering involved. You just put it together and put the cap on. So that's how these um, electric oil pumps work. A mechanical oil pump is just, instead of having the electric motor to drive it, just uses a gear. And so that's where the big cost saving is. The gear is less expensive than the windings, the magnet, and the electronics. So this is the, the benefit of having a, a mechanical oil pump is that this gear ends up being less expensive than the electric motor. But of course, the electric motor gives you the advantage of having the controllability so you can get the flow when the motor's, when everything's hot and under, so you can get high flow at low speed and you can get low flow at high speed when the conditions are right for it. So if you have, you're just cruising down the highway on a typical fall day, nothing's real warm, you don't need a lot of cooling for the motor, you can just flow a small amount of oil. And so that controllability gives you better highway electric range and it also gives you the ability to keep it cool at the bottom of Death Valley. So the electric um, oil pump has some engineering advantages, controllability. Um, the mechanical oil pump has the cost advantage by using just a gear instead of the electric motor. GM is a company that makes millions of automatic transmissions and they have a mechanical um, oil pump in every automatic transmission. So this is in production 
in the, in the millions for General Motors. So why not use a production oil pump for the electric drive unit in place of the electric oil pump that they originally had in the Chevy Bolt? When you look at the cost of these two, when the Chevy Bolt first came out, there was essentially almost no electric vehicle market. And so they had to kind of invent the, an electric oil pump. Tesla was in low volume production at that time. These were custom commodities that, that were relatively high cost. And so at the time, the, and, and the, I'm sure the build materials for the Chevy Bolt still shows the original costs for these oil pumps. This was a relatively high cost oil pump. And when this was being designed back in 2019, this was a very high volume mechanical oil pump. I'm sure there's a very large cost difference um, in the tens or 20, 20, 10 or $20 range between these pumps. So that when you substitute the mechanical pump for the um, electric oil pump in the bill of uh, materials, it looks like a really significant cost savings for the company. And they both do the job of pumping the oil and cooling things. So it looks like a clear win for General Motors to use their production mechanical oil pump in place of the electric oil pump. But so if that's as far as you want to go, you don't need an engineering consultant to uh, make this kind of change. The issue is that the engineers at the company know that it's not that simple. And so you need an engineering consulting company that understands the fully accounted cost of a change like that, not just the simple build materials um, change. What happens when you put this in this does not work the same way as an electric oil pump. With an electric oil pump, you have the freedom to command precisely the oil flow that you need at any given moment. With a mechanical oil pump, this gear, which goes in here, has a fixed ratio between the output of the, uh, of the drive unit so the speed of the wheels of the car. And so that fixed ratio is gonna give you a certain volume flow rate out of the pump. So you have to design the pump such that this fixed ratio gives you adequate cooling for the worst case scenario. So when you're towing a vehicle coming out of Death Valley on the hottest day of the year, you've got enough cooling flow rate um, at low speed as you're pulling out of, the, out of Death Valley. Unfortunately, that same gear ratio now is going to give you too much flow for the typical condition when you're driving on the highway with light load on a level ground in the middle of the, a fall autumn afternoon like today. So, what do you do? Do you have too much oil flow? If that oil spraying all over the place is gonna cause extra loss in your electric drive unit, and you wanna give your customer competitive highway electric range. So what GM did, and the engineers are to be commended because they, the results are, they kind of speak for themselves. This is an incredibly efficient drive unit. But one of the things they had to do is add this plastic part here to help deflect the oil when you have high flow rate, deflect the oil away from the gears so that you don't end up with extra spin loss due to spraying too, too much oil over all of the gears. Also, this helps prevent foaming. So if you're spraying too much oil on the gears, and the gears are spraying the oil everywhere and inside turning this into the inside of a washing machine, 
you end up with foaming in the oil. And the foaming reduces the effectiveness of the oil and it's no longer a good lubricant or a good cooling agent. So to prevent foaming and prevent the extra spin loss, they added this plastic deflector. So this is a part that nobody else has in their uh, electric drive unit um, because nobody else is using a mechanical oil pump. So there's the cost of this plastic part and the cost of, of putting this in that has to be factored in to the fully accounted cost of this type of a, of a design change. Now, did GM end up with a net cost save after all of the engineering um, that has to go into making the changes to accommodate this type of change? Yeah, I think in 2019, this did end up being a clear cost savings over the, oil, the electric oil pump to put in the mechanical oil pump. But what's happened between 2019 and 2025, and now if you're developing things for 2026 and beyond, is that now electric vehicles are being made in the millions, tens of millions, and these electric oil pumps have become a commodity item. And so the cost is no longer what it was when the Chevy Bolt was sourcing an electric oil pump back in 2015. The cost of these has come down. And so now, if GM is doing this again, say for example, for the 27 Chevy Bolt, it wouldn't surprise me to see a change going to go back to um, an electric oil pump. So what you need when you're talking to an engineering consultant is a, a company that understands fully accounted cost and the engineering implications of these types of design changes to help you navigate what is best in the economic climate of 2025, 2026, and not necessarily what your bill of materials says from the costs of yesteryear. So that's what we're going to, that's what we do here at Monroe, help you navigate that um, new economic reality and help you save money and at the same time improve the product for your customers. So that's what we're all about. Thanks.